These are some of the weirdest scientific studies we've seen. How would a fidget spinner do in space? According to this astronaut, the answer is pretty well. In 2017, astronaut Randy Bresnik tested the toy's spinning capabilities, as well as his own. Space fanatics were quick to debate how long it would spin. In his post on Twitter, Bresnik didn't come to a conclusion, but it was a great way to experiment with Newton's law of motion and watch the time go by. Have you been flushing your money down the toilet? You may think so after you hear that scientists in California are paying for, well... We want people's poop. And so we're collecting, well, people are collecting poop for us. Jennifer Smilowitz is the Associate Director of the Food for Health Institute at UC Davis. In 2021, her department put out a call for 20 people to hand over their waste so she could get a better understanding of how to feed the microorganisms in the gut. What we're trying to understand ultimately um, is what should people be eating, what types of carbohydrates they should eat to guide a healthy gut microbiome. And in order to do that, we need to first understand what are the types of carbohydrates that beneficial microbes eat. Her department conducted a similar study on breast milk, but since adults don't consume breast milk, she had to study what they do eat. We eat plant foods. So imagine finding the right combination of plant foods for your microbiome to support the healthy guys, the beneficial microbes, rather than support um, uh, or to outcompete the pathogens, the, the undesirable uh, bacteria. Over 60 people volunteered for the study. Those selected received a $75 gift card to Target for their troubles. While she's excited about her research, she says she understands why some passed on her offer. I get why it's gross. You know, there's bacteria and, and people are afraid of it. But um, and it smells and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, who can tell you a lot about a person's health? In August of 2022, German researchers determined that sleeping, jumping spiders can fall into a REM cycle. The same sort of deep dreamlike sleep with the rapid eye movements that humans do. They told CBS News. They have little bursts of activity throughout the night that co like reoccur uh, really regularly. And the durations are also very regular. Jumping spiders were observed taking naps using night vision cameras. So I personally do think that they're experiencing visual dreams, but it will be very difficult to prove that scientifically. I would imagine they're going to be dreaming about flies, probably. In January of 2022, scientists at Israel's Ben Gurion University taught goldfish how to drive tiny robotic tanks. Fish don't drive cars, so we had to train them uh, to understand what we want from want them to do. And the easiest way to train a goldfish is with food. The fish tanks have been equipped with LiDAR, a technology used in some self-driving cars, a computer, and a camera. The fish were enticed to direct their watery vehicle toward a pink rectangle on the wall. But don't worry about any crashes. We uh, equipped the uh, water tank with, uh, with the sensors uh, so it doesn't collide with obstacles in the environment. Uh, in case the fish decides to get too close to a wall, but also with a camera that can sense where the fish is in the water tank and guides the vehicle according to that, uh, to that pose of the fish in the tank. Professor Ben Shahar and his team believe the ability to navigate is a universal trait and that fish can do far more than we think. In 2021, this potty-trained cow did its business in a mulu. As part of a research project, behavioral scientists successfully toilet trained 11 out of 16 cows. It can take months or years to teach a toddler, but it only took 15 days for scientists in Germany to teach cows to urinate in a custom toilet. The thing that's really surprising here is how quickly the cows learn relative to children. So with very, very intensive training, some children can learn in a matter of a day or so. But most children, as you'll be aware, take uh, quite some time. So we, we only had 15 training sessions with these animals and, and we had about 
Yeah, on average, 20, 25 urinations and they were fully trained. Once business was done, they were rewarded with a super sweet liquid of mostly molasses. If the cow urinated outside the mulu, they got a squirt of cold water. Although it's strange, the motive behind the study is quite serious. When you have animals outdoors, the urea can get converted into nitrates in the soil and then go and pollute the waterways, cause uh, all sorts of problems in the waterways. And if the nitrate concentrations are too high, you get blue babies and all that sort of thing. That's the direct nitrate problem from the, in the soil. And then the nitrates get converted to nitrous oxide, which is 300 times more potent than, um, than carbon dioxide. The EPA says in 2019, nitrous oxide comprised 7% of all the U.S. greenhouse gases. But the biggest environmental problem for livestock is the methane they emit in belches and flatulates, which is a significant source of global warming. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andreas Wendell.